Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it bullish enthusiasm reigns, and I don't think there's exhibit one is what's on the screen. NVIDIA, a weekly chart of NVIDIA. Uh, of course, everyone's well aware of what it's been doing and, uh, and how it's uh, skyrocketed here, especially since the first of the year. Uh, in this video, I'm going to share with you an update uh, I gave my members this morning. So, you know, since it's the end of the month, end of the quarter, first half of the year, I thought I'd go ahead and just share the update that I gave them on the four major indices that I cover on a uh, regular basis. Uh, I also added in, when I look at the NASDAQ, I did do the composite as well as the NASDAQ 100. I'm mostly looking at the NASDAQ 100, but I thought I'd just take a look at the composite too. So... Uh, without further ado, here is that summary I gave the members. I uh, hope you find it helpful. Okay, here's the side-by-side -side view of the industrials, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ 100. The Dow was up 680 points this last week. So as you can see with all the indices, you know, we had this up week, and then the, the previous week was down, and then we're back up again. So... You know, a little bit of whipping back and forth in here, and it's happening with all three of the major indices. Um, but the Dow up 680, the S&P 500 up 102, and then the NASDAQ 100 up 288 points. So that is the picture, kind of a continue with, continued thrust to the upside. Let's take a look at the industrials versus transports. And the transports, big week. You know, again, we had a little bit of a pause pullback the previous week but up 842 points this last week. This continues to look like a possible little head and shoulders consolidation pattern, but if that's the case, this needs to flip back down here uh, pretty soon, or, I mean, it's just going to be a push too far, okay? But that's just something I'm kind of eyeballing right now. All right, so that's where we're sitting there with the transports. Uh, let's go back and take a look at the industrials. Uh, on Friday, we had a pretty good little pop the way it gapped up here uh, at, the, uh, at the open, up 285 points, though, at the end of the day. So we jumped, gapped, you know, ran it for a little while, but wasn't, wasn't huge. And, you know, it wasn't like this kind of candle, but, uh, you know, still the fact that we created this little gap in here, it's going to be interesting to see whether the market creates a little island like gaps back down on Monday, or do we get continuation? So when I look at the LA Wave picture, here's what we've got. Continue to look at this as a WXY. And within that, uh, we're looking at this Y and saying, okay, what do we have? Is this, you know, in terms of an ABC, uh, you know, we struggled with the wave count in here because of the way this looked. And, and so right now, the way I'm looking at this, let's just go take a look at the daily. And then, you know, I want to come back. Uh, I just thought about something, too. I want to come back to the monthly view here for a minute. But let me finish this thought. Let me just show you this. Now I'm going to go back to the monthly view and show you the monthly picture. So here's what I think is going on. I think we had a, in the C wave, I think we have one, two, then we got a third wave here, fourth wave pullback that was fairly deep. And then now we're trying to finish off the fifth wave of the C wave. Now, I mean, it could turn into something. It could become truncated. I mean, just not sure. But I think it implies that maybe we have a little bit more to go. We're getting overbought again. Uh, you know, you see how we got the divergence here. And I'm looking at the 195 minute time frame. We got the divergence right in here and it came back. Right now we're up there, we'll see what we get, but I think we may have a little bit more to go to finish off this C wave. All right, let me, let's take a look at the, um, the monthly view. Okay, I'm gonna pull up the snapshot. So here's what, what it is, and I'll be posting this on the, um, on the website, on the page for the end of the month view. So. The Dow was up 1499.33 for the month of, uh, of June. So kind of a engulfing, a bullish engulfing type candle, although really wasn't purely that because it didn't get down below where it closed. Um, it didn't open lower kind of thing. 
but doesn't matter. I mean, it's still up and up uh, for the month. Now, the thing I want to point out in here is I know it's it's frustrating that we've had after what several months down, I think it was like 10 months down from January down to October, and then we've had two, four, six, eight, nine months here of a counter trend move. So, you know, 10 months down, nine months counter trend move. So a lot of folks are act, act, looking at this saying, well, wait a minute, you know, it's pretty strong and pretty long lasting counter trend move for a bear market. Is this, are we really still in a bear market? Now, I want to show, I want to go back and take a look at something. Let me, let me get rid of this video, this uh, snapshot picture. I'm going to go back over here daily and I want to go to the weekly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this to monthly. <clears throat> Go to semi-log because we're talking about very long term to get the picture. I'm going to shrink this down. And then what I want to do is go back and take a look at some <clears throat> history in here. I'm struggling with my voice a little bit here this morning. Now, you know, I've talked about the fact that we are at a super cycle top at a minimum and a grand super cycle top is very most likely what we are doing. So we're going to be talking about some pretty big swinging moves that are going on. But what I wanted to do is just show you, if you go back to the first cycle waves within this grand super cycle, this, this super cycle move that we had from 1932 to 2022, you know, 90 years, okay? So here's the, the first cycle wave one and cycle wave two. The, the first wave was five years. The second wave down was five years, approximately. But within that bear market, you look at this and say, well, wow. I mean, here was 12 months, but here, here was eight months just to get to the intra-month high. This actually edged slightly above the move that happened in September 1939. Wow, September 1939, you remember that, right? That's when Nazi Germany was invading, invaded Poland, invaded a whole bunch of countries. Of course, uh, you know, it just everything was um, erupting at that time. And so the point here is 12 months, eight months, five months, five months, eight months, six months, 17 months. So the time frame that we're dealing with of you know, 10 months down, eight to nine months back in terms of a counter trend move. These aren't unusual time frames that we're talking about for swing moves at all. Not unusual at all. And, we're, you know, when you're talking about a big bear market. And the other thing I wanted to show you is when you go back into cycle wave four. Now, granted, you wouldn't know you were in cycle wave four like this until once you've experienced it, you, you would see the frustration in terms of what was happening in the big moves in here. I've got this labeled, this is from 1966 to August of 1982, okay? This is a big, complex, uh, what I label combined WXY, and I've got this as a flat, an X wave, and then a triangle, an A, B, C, D, E, and then an explosion, an eruption that occurred in August of 1982. Now, and, and then we just took off. Now, look at this time frame from in January of 1966. The first move down nine months. The next move up, everybody was thought, oh, we're in a new you know, bull market, right? 26 months. But did it, I'm not, I don't think it even took out the high. 994.65. The high. 1,001.11. It didn't even take out the high. After 26 months of a, of a counter trend ABC move up, and then we got this huge 17-month swing to the downside in 1970. This was brutal. This killed a lot of people on Wall Street and in the, you know, just in the market in general. Okay. And 
And so this is just the first segment, and you can see the same kind of time frames that we're experiencing throughout this. I have a feeling that on a super cycle level, we're going to be experiencing something very similar. But the other thing that is uh, that happened in here is, look how many times it tried to get above a thousand, and but just couldn't do it. And then how many times it did stick, tick, uh, you know, stick its head above the thousand level, and everybody thought, yeah, here we go, you know, you know, way, we're just off to the races. And then that's all she wrote. You know, sixteen years of trying to get above a thousand. Okay, so. The point that I'm, the whole point of even mentioning this is just to say, yeah, we're experiencing very frustrating kind of time frames right now, but it's not unusual in uh, in these bear market moves to be experiencing this kind of time frame at all. Okay, enough on that. Let me go back to the weekly and get us uh, in here at a short-term time frame. I'm going off of, go back to uh, arithmetic, get off the semi-log. Um, and uh, let's take a look. I've talked about the Dow. Let's take a look at the S&P. Okay, here's the S&P 500. It was up 53.94 on Friday and up 102 for the week, as we already mentioned. So the wave count that we've got in here hasn't changed. Let me see if I can get this to move over a little bit. Here's the big picture. We're a little over two thirds retracement of two versus one. We're, look, we're looking at a complex WXY double zigzag in here. And then when we drill down and take a look at the Y uh, move, here's the ABC that we've got. Now I've tweaked this a little bit, okay, as I start to look at this. Um, I have tweaked it, but I do think similar to the Dow Industrials, I think we may have a little bit more to go to finish off this C wave, and it's because of what we're getting. Now, you look at the divergence that's developing on the daily, okay? And then here's what I've got for this last leg. So this B wave, three wave B, zigzag, and now the C wave is doing this. Here's the five wave move that we've got going on, okay? And I like this, you know, five wave move up for wave three, Nice gappy type movement, you know, kind of going vertical in wave three. That looks classic. And then now here we are in the last wave of here, wave C of five. And I just don't think we have five waves quite complete yet. So we may have a little bit more to go to push to the upside. That's our picture on the S&P 500. Now let's take a look at the uh, NASDAQ 100. Okay, NDX, uh, NASDAQ 100 was up 239 points uh, for the, on Friday and 287.73 for the week. So really, Friday pretty much salvaged the week, you know, it, it, because the vast majority of the points that occurred for the week occurred on the last day of the week. So there's no change in the picture that we've got, the LA Wave picture. Uh, I continue to hold this. We're very extended uh, when we look at this, up almost 78.6% on the retracement move. You know, WXY, I think we've got, you know, uh, you know, pretty lengthy C wave going on in here. And, you know, just watching for this, you see the little bit of the divergence that's showing up in here just in the last between these two weeks the week of June 11th, and then this last week, the week of June 25th. Okay, so that is the picture. That looks like a nice setup for coming back down, uh, but uh, no real change in, in the picture that we got here. Looking for this to roll over and head south. Now, I want to take a look at the Russell 2000. Seems like, oh, there was one other. I just wanted to show you the... Um, the NASDAQ on a weekly basis, also the NASDAQ composite, and only to just show you where it is, uh, the high that was achieved, you know, the three weeks ago, uh, almost exactly 61.8% of retracement of the move down that, you know, bottomed in uh, mid-October. Okay, so here's how the NASDAQ composite works. So the NASDAQ 100 is all the way up here to 78.6%, the NASDAQ composites down here at 61.8%. Uh, 
And yes, we're getting divergence between the two also here these these two weeks. So three weeks ago and then this most recent week. Okay, So that is the picture we've got on the NASDAQ composite. Let's take a look at the Russell 2000. Um, let me go back over here and I'll pull that up. Okay, IWM, the Russell 2000 ETF, uh, is up 0.89 on Friday. So we opened all the way up here and then we pulled back during the day and closed down below. Uh, it was up 6.7 for the week. I continue to hold this as a uh, minor wave two of intermediate wave two, but I'm just not sure when I look at the wave structure in here, I'm just not sure we're quite done yet. I think we've got this fifth wave that's trying to finish. I think we may be very close, but I'm just not sure that we're done. And, uh, and here's, Here's the picture in here. It's similar to the others. This is my best takedown. I've kind of re-looked at this. You know, the key is trying to get nice five-wave move in here for wave three. And then this is the way it looks like it's unfolding. So if that's the case, what are we looking at in this last wave up? You know, so this is the picture that we've got. And it's not quite clear. Uh, do we have a quick little one, two in here that bottoms here? And then we've, we're trying to get our little five wave move up. This could be part of a fourth wave developing, which would imply one more move in here. And so that is what I'm looking at here with the Russell 2000. I think we may have a little bit more to go, uh, but I don't think it's much. You know, okay, that's the picture. We've got, we definitely, you know, we're not getting divergence because it didn't close, you know, we didn't close the day higher than where we were here on the 13th. But, um, boy, I tell you what, I <laughs> this bar was really, really tempting for me to, uh, to buy puts. I know we got stopped out on this move during the day on Thursday, but then the way this candle developed here on Friday, I almost bought puts right at the close, but uh, the, the wave count kind of held me back. So right now I'm going to be watching that pretty close. Okay, that is um, that is the picture we've got here on the uh, indices. Let's take a look at our indicators. Okay, that concludes uh, today's or this weekend's video. If you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to the YouTube channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this information on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website. Check out the membership. Everyone, have a great week. We'll talk to you on the next video.